Gebet ich bitte ihn jetzt bitte zu sagen, die Amen. Uh, today we celebrate the feast of Saint Peter Nolasco and also the uh, commemoration of Saint Agnes. That's her octave was, uh, this is the octave day of Saint Agnes. Uh, so eight days ago we celebrated her feast and that was a sign with what veneration uh, she had there in the early church. Uh, eight days of, of, of remembering that, that uh, uh, giving of her life. Um, so that's, that's a sign, you see that. Um, saints that, that are not so well known these days, but very, very highly venerated in the beginning because uh, they were uh, one of the first and they, of the good example they gave. Um, but also today, let's uh, see, Peter and Alasco is the feast uh, for today. Um, uh, two other um, names to mention is uh, Charlemagne, not a saint, far from it, but uh, very important in the history of the church. So he died today in the year 814, and Charlemagne, uh, 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 Charles Magnus, right, Charlemagne, was the first of the Holy Roman emperors, and he was the first, um, you could say, unified, or the first ruler in the West that had unified that entire portion of Europe since uh, the classical era of, of the Romans. So a, a, a tremendous achievement, and would start an empire that would last up until uh, like 1860. Right? So a thousand years, you had the Holy Roman Empire in the West. In the East, you had Constantinople, you had the Byzantine M Empire. Um, that would continue up until 1400, the fall of Constantinople. But anyways, so um, uh, Charlemagne, the first of the Holy Roman Emperors, a uh, uh, proponent, a uh, defender of the papacy, um, and uh, under his reign, you had the Carolingian Renaissance, right? There's the... Um, uh, like the Renaissance everybody thinks of in, in Italy in the 1400s. This is the Carolingian Renaissance in, in art, music, architecture, uh, language. So anyways, just uh, important to note his date of death. Uh, he was married five times. He had five wives and four mistresses. That's why he'll never be a saint. So, uh, but, um, you know, not that, but uh, other reasons as well, but an important figure in the church. Also, I just, I, ha I have to mention this one. Blessed James the Almsgiver. Uh, he was 13th century Italy, born to a wealthy Italian family, studied law, but left it for the priesthood. And he restored a ruined hospital where he tended the sick um, and gave legal advice for free. And he discovered the, um, something how, somehow the hospital was falling in di into disrepair because its funding had been misappropriated. Well, he was a lawyer. He knew what to do. Uh, and so he found out it was the bishop of the city. So he sued the bishop and won. And, and got the money restored to the hospital. Um, New York and Chicago get their mafia from somewhere, and it was from Italy. Those of the bishop hired two hitmen to kill him and hide the body. And now we're starting to sound like, you know, some kind of primetime television show. Well, they did, uh, and they hid his body in this little stand of trees, and it was discovered by shepherds who found that the trees were in full bloom in the middle of winter. And so they saw this grave, so they dug it up and they, they found him, they found that his remains. So um, that's Blessed James, the almsgiver, and just goes to show just because you're a bishop doesn't mean you're not a criminal, a crook, or a murderer. I guess there's a better way to say that, but <laughs> there is corruption in the church. It's been there from the beginning. We shouldn't be surprised and we hear of terrible things. So when you've got a weak bishop, well, at least he's not like hiring hitmen. So maybe <laughs> look on the bright side. Maybe I shouldn't publish this sermon. I don't know. Uh, St. Peter Nolasco, um, our saint for today, a nobleman born in southern France in the year 1189. Now, we should, have, we should have remembered this name. If you heard my sermon on Raymond of Penafort from a few days ago, uh, Raymond of Penafort was the one who encouraged Peter Nolasco to found the Order of the Mercedarians. And the Mercedarians is an order um, dedicated to the redeeming of captives. This is a big problem uh, for many hundreds of years in the Mediterranean. The, the Muslims uh, were always raiding the coast, and they were, they were destroying towns uh, and taking captives, taking people prisoner. And, and this, this, is, this still goes on today, by the way. Like, slavery still exists in the world, and it's mostly in, uh, like, Indonesia, Asia, and very much in the Middle East. Um, it's something that's just not, not talked about, but very much, it's been going on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So Peter Nolasco um, is a young nobleman, and um, he was, uh, he fought, he fought the Muslims, um, he was a, a, a knight, a man-at-arms, 
but he wanted to give his life, he wanted to give his um, talents to God. Well, how do you do that, right? And, and like what St. Paul says, whether you eat or drink or sleep, do all for the glory of God, and whatever you have, give it to God. So here we have a man who wants to give his uh, battle prowess to God, and there is a place for that, not just for the Crusades, but in general. So he starts the Mercedarians, and that is, the Mercedarians, it's a short name for the Royal and Military Order of Our Lady of Mercy of the Redemption of Captives. And um, he was, uh, 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 this was, this was founded to, uh, what can I say, um, not just to redeem captives, but to prevent them from being captured in the first place. So it was kind of a, a defense uh, as well, right? People talk about crusaders uh, invading Muslim lands and trying to gain conquests. It was the other way around. Um, in fact, actually, the, the, the Spain up to this point was uh, invaded by the Muslims in the year 700, um, around the year 700, and for the next 700 years until 1400, uh, France and uh, northern Spain would have to fight against constant Muslim aggression over and over and over again. <clears throat> uh, so St. Peter in Alaska um, is, um, uh, you know, giving his, giving his life to God, and Raymond de Penyafort encourages him to do this, and... Uh, uh, Peter Nolasco had been the tutor of the young King James I of Aragon. Remember, um, Raymond de Penyafort was his confessor, advisor. Peter Nolasco was his tutor at one point. And, and, and Raymond de Penyafort encourages him, yeah, ask, get the king's help. So I found this order. So St. Peter's one, thinking about it, wondering what to do. And then he has a dream uh, that um, Our Lady visits him and asks him to found this order. And he didn't know what to think about that. So he went to the king of uh, Aragon and said, um, you know, I had this dream uh, about, and um, uh, the king of Aragon says, what is the dream about starting the, like the Mercedarians? He's like, yeah, how did you know that? He's like, I had the same dream. Was it, what is on, was it on this night? Yes, yeah, that was the same night I had the dream. So the same time, uh, Our Lady appeared to both uh, the king and Peter um, uh, Nolasco at the same time about founding this order. So uh, they did, with the help of the king, it attracted uh, many young noblemen uh, who had the means to fight and the ability to, um, the ability to fight and the means to ransom captives. And people will talk about that, these young sons of noblemen, these disenfranchised uh, nobility. What did they do with their time? Okay, sure, some of them went carousing, rabble-rousing, sure. Uh, others joined monasteries, became monks, uh, gave up their wealth and titles, lived a life of penance, and others of them gave their wealth and their abilities uh, to orders like the Mercedarians. And they, they fought for the poor, they fought for the defenseless, uh, they fought for the widows and the orphans, and they gave their money to ransom captives. And it was very successful. It ransomed 2,700 persons in St. Peter's lifetime and over 70,000 captives over the next several hundred years. And this order of the Mercedarians uh, was very much involved in the um, Reconquista of Spain that took place in the, the uh, 15th century. Uh, so um, again, a sign of um, a divine favor. Uh, the day you die is important. St. Peter Nolasco died on Christmas morning in the year 1256. So again, uh, not, not a priest, not a monk, uh, but a soldier and a knight who had pledged his arms and armor for the service of God. Uh, so a great example there of a life, again, you know, um, he, didn't, he, never, he didn't get married, right? He wasn't a monk, he wasn't a priest, he didn't get married, he just gave his life to God. A vocation is whatever God is calling you to do. So don't worry if you still haven't found it yet, who knows, right, what God has in store for you. Um, and I would say that the, our, our maybe uh, lesson for this um, from Peter Nolasco and the Mercedarians, physical slavery, as I've mentioned before, is only one kind of slavery. The worst kind is the moral kind or the intellectual kind, or the emotional kind. Uh, we can be slaves in all manner of ways, and it is the love of God that sets us free. Um, perfect love of God is perfect freedom, and any time we love anything or anyone else to the detriment of our love of God, we are that, less, that much less free, that much more slaves. How many people are slaves to um, well, of course, you know, just the usual money, power, and so on. But how many people are slaves to a, a schedule or an idea or a slave to stress or a slave to, um, you know, whatever anger it may be? Uh, let it go, right? I mean, it's, it, it's not going to matter. All that matters is the love of God. If we feel stressed out, I have so much to do, my life is spiraling out of control, 
it, you're in your, a prison of your own making. It is not anything on the outside that has us imprisoned that can control us. It is on the inside. It's the importance we attach to it. I mean, they make movies about this kind of stuff. How somebody gets like amnesia and they don't remember anything. And they wake up and they're perfectly happy. They're like, like a little kid. Like, oh, this is great. You know, and, and it, it's the memory of things. It's, it's the own, it's the, it's the, uh, uh, value we put on exterior things that makes them pressure us. And we, we, we have to be able to remember that when we start feeling that, when we start feeling like I'm a victim of my circumstances. Absolutely not. We're, we are prisoner to nobody but ourselves. And we, we have the key to our own prison, whatever that may be. Uh, and it is God who shows us that. It's the love of God. It's our prayer. And above all, it is our resignation to whatever happens. Uh, regardless of what happens to us, blessed be God. Good things, bad things, fortune, disaster, blessed be God. This is God's will. God may not have brought it to me, uh, but what God does will is that when bad things happen, I respond well. I respond with patience, I respond with resignation, and I try to learn what I can and do as much as I can in this bad, uncomfortable, you know, situation, whatever it may be. When we respond in that way, we are far less stressed, we are far more relaxed, we learn, we grow, and we're, we just are that much more free. We give a good example to the people around us. So that is what I would like us to remember today about Peter Nolasco and the Mercedarians, is that he redeemed physical slaves, right? Uh, let's redeem ourselves and others from the prisons, right? From slavery to stress or anger or bitterness or helplessness or whatever it may be. Uh, let us redeem ourselves, right? But meaning pray, right? Pray, present ourselves to God, and he's going to be the one who saves us through grace and through a realization. It's just the love of God that matters. That's what's the most important thing at all. Uh, so let's pray for that grace uh, and uh, uh, pray through the intercession of St. Peter Nolasco. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.